It was one minute to six, and the whole pier was deserted. Well, not quite deserted. There were two people fast asleep, an extremely fat person and a policeman. Suddenly, the policeman sat up and looked at his watch. They're going to close the gate, he said. Quick, let's get to the exit. A long way away, Dunwoody was standing by the big gate. Come on, she said, I'm going out tonight. I'm closing this gate in five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. I made it. Inspector Challoner and Fat Tulip squeezed through the gate and Dunwoody slammed it shut. Then she unpinned a little key from her swimming costume and locked it tight. Suddenly, the inspector's face fell. Where was his truncheon? Oh, no, he'd left it on the other end of the pier. I'm afraid uh, you'll have to open up again, madam, he said. No chance, replied Dunwoody, clip-clopping off down the promenade in her high-heeled shoes. I'm going to the disco. The inspector raced after her. But uh, I can't leave my truncheon out all night, he said. It'll go rusty. All right, said Dunwoody. I'll give you the key and you can go back and fetch your truncheon and give me the key back in the morning. But guard it with your life. I want it back by five to nine. Otherwise, there'll be big trouble. Half an hour later, Fat Tulip was wandering around by the old pier, picking things up. A long piece of green seaweed, a plastic bottle, a little white shell with a pink blob on it. Inspector Challoner came marching towards him with his truncheon in one hand and the little key in the other. No more rubbish, Squire, he said. Haven't you brought enough junk into the beach hut as it is? Why can't you collect something interesting for a change? At that moment, Inspector Challoner saw a tiny little tail sticking up out of the mud. Oh. Like that thing, for instance. Now, that is what I call really interesting. Not like your dirty old stuff. And he passed Fat Tulip his truncheon and he bent down to pick the thing up. The tail belonged to a worm called Bootlace, and she didn't like being yanked around. She buried her head even deeper and held on tight. Oh, this, said the inspector, passing the little key to Fat Tulip. I'm gonna need both hands for this job. And he pulled even tighter. Fat Tulip waited. This is getting a bit boring, he said. How long is it gonna take? Not long, Squire, said the inspector. I'm just going to pull this little creature up. An hour went by. Um, you haven't pulled it up very far yet, have you, said Fat Tulip. Can I go home? All right, said the inspector, his eyes bulging. But make sure you put that key in a safe place. When Fat Tulip got back to the beach hut, he hung the seaweed on the washing line with all the other seaweed, and he put the plastic bottle on the floor with all the other plastic bottles, and he put the little white shell on the windowsill with all the other little white shells. Then he tucked Inspector Channeler's truncheon under Inspector Channeler's pillow and went to bed. Ooh, wait a minute, he thought. I was supposed to put this key in a safe place. Where shall I put it? Oh, I know. And he popped the key in the little white shell and then fell fast asleep. Slowly, the little white shell shut tight and the key was trapped inside it. Two hours later, Inspector Challoner crawled back to the beach hut empty-handed. The tide had come in, bootlace had escaped and his police boots were all wet. He was really cross. Bwah! He walked into a great load of seaweed on the washing line. Then, poof! He tripped over 18 plastic bottles which were lying on the floor. And finally, he crawled into bed. Poof! He hit his head on something hard under his pillow. It was his truncheon. This beach hut is a complete mess, he said. It's time I did something about it. And he got out a big plastic bag and scooped all the bottles into it. At that very moment, under the pier, Bootlace was trying to calm down a cockerel called Mrs Morrison, who'd lost her little boy Jim, and she was ever so upset. It was up by the beach, she said. I'd only turned my shell for a minute, and when I turned back again, he'd gone. 
Don't worry, replied Bootlace. I'll find him. And she started burrowing her way through the shingle. You can't mistake him, Mrs. Morrison called after her. He's got a white shell with a little pink blob on it. Next morning, Fat Tulip woke up in amazement. The whole beach hut was completely clean and tidy. Where's my beach collection? He said. Gone, thrown out, chucked away, replied the inspector. What, even my little white shells? Yes, even your little white shells. What, even my little white shell with Dunwoody's key in it? Yes, even your little white shell with Dun... What do you mean, your little white shell with Dunwoody's key in it? I thought I told you to put that key in a safe place. I did. I put it in the little white shell. Quick, said the inspector. There's not a moment to lose. I dumped all your stuff down by the old pier. We've got to find that key by five to nine. Otherwise... Yes, said Fat Tulip. I know. Otherwise, there'll be big trouble. But when they got to the beach, they stopped and stared in amazement. There were no shells anywhere. Where had they all gone? At that moment, they heard a voice behind them. Looking for something, it said. It was Dunwoody. You haven't lost my key, have you? No, no, goodness me, no, said the inspector. <laughs> Whatever gave you that idea? And his face turned bright red. We were just uh, collecting shells. Well, you won't find any here, said Dunwoody. I tidied them all up this morning when I was dusting the beach. I put them round the corner by the old hut. And she flip-flopped off in her flip-flops. And don't forget, she said, I want my key back by five to nine. Otherwise, yes, said the inspector. We know. The minute she was gone, Inspector Challoner looked at his watch. It was half past eight. Only 25 minutes left to find that key. They raced off to the old hut. There ahead of them was not one shell, not a hundred shells, but 8,746,963 shells in a great big pile. No time to lose, said the inspector. Get searching. They climbed into the shells. They tunneled through the shells. They stood on their heads in the shells. They picked up each shell, peered into it and threw it away. Then they stopped. From deep inside the pile, there was a strange noise. Meep, it went. Meep, meep, meep. Meep, 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 meep. It was Jim Morrison crying for his mummy. Deep below the sand, Bootlace heard the crying cockle and started tunnelling towards it. Up on the surface, Fat Tulip and the inspector were desperately clawing their way through the shells. Faster and faster, tunnel Bootlace, faster and faster, clawed the inspector and Fat Tulip until there was just one shell left to look inside. That's the one, said Fat Tulip, that white one with the little pink blob on it. Gotcha, sunshine, said the inspector and bent down to pick it up. At that moment, a worm's head stuck itself out of the sand, snatched the crying cockle and disappeared again. Stop thief, said the inspector, and peered down the wormhole. But it was too late. The shell had disappeared. Deep below the surface, Bootlace was telling little Jim off. You naughty boy, she said, and what's that disgusting-looking key thing in your mouth? You spit it out immediately. You don't know where it's been. <laughs> went Jim, and immediately the key shot out of his shell like a bullet out of a gun. Up the wormhole it went until, boom, it hit something, something pink and squashy. <laughs> went the inspector shooting up in the air and clutching onto his nose. At that moment, Dunwoody returned. It's five to nine, inspector, she said. Can I have my key back, please? It's not my name, said the inspector. He said it stuck up his nose, explained Fat Tulip. Oh, Inspector, said Dunwoody, pulling it out and wiping it. That is a funny place to keep it. That afternoon, Dunwoody let two people have free goes on all her amusements. One was a fat person with glasses, and the other was a policeman with a great big white bandage all round his nose. Inspector, said Dunwoody, Thank you for looking after that key for me last night. Would you like to look after it again tonight? No, thank you, said the inspector. No, thank you very much. <laughs>